Perfectly placed. Is he in focus? Let's look. You need a. He looks in focus to me. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> Don't worry about me. I'll just <laughs> I'll just lean in. Uh, oh. Okay. Yeah, you're good. You go back and make sure I'm like at least centered. That's good. There you go. There. <laughs> That's a that's an awful lot of moving. Yeah. Know, right? <laughs> well, see, the problem is, is he usually runs this really soft camera, and so when he doesn't have the soft camera on him, he gets very, very uneasy. Uh, so I'm going to have several filters on. You don't want this unfiltered. <laughs> this mug on your screen unfiltered. <laughs> this is terrible. This is terrible. People start hitting the unsubscribe <laughs> button just as quick as the they what? see it. The unsub button. They see you the on the screen. Button. Yeah. yeah. I can't hear anything in these micro- in these headphones. What have you done now? First, first it's focused, now it's the headphones. Maybe it's not plugged. Is it plugged in? I don't know. I'm sure it is. Yeah, they're all plugged in. Okay. Whatever. You'll be all right. You sound just fine. I, I'm sure I do. I just can't hear anything. Well, it's the plosives that I'm worried about. The what? Plosives. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll, yeah, I'll be careful. I'll be good. All right, then. Yeah. Matt, I'm not even going to try and pronounce your last name. Okay. <laughs> it's not I, as bad as it sounds. Lockowitzer. Yeah, I'm not going <laughs> to. I'm from the South, bro. It's not going to sound like that, I promise. It's going to sound way different. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself, because you, you beat me. La- was it last year or was it the year before? Year, the year before, before, yeah. You beat me. I did. I cannot believe this. You let him on our show. You're terrible. <laughs> David hated TikTok-ing. you for months. I was TikToking. I don't know. It beat, it beat you what? It, he was the winner of the Ratchet and Ranch oh, All Star Award two years Minnesota. ago. Minnesota. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Are you also open seven days a week? I am not. Well, I guess that's the threshold now. <laughs> I, I think Apparently, so. If you're going to win again, you have to be open seven days a week. You also have to have like 57 bays and something else. Holy so cow. It's, yeah, it's a crazy setup. Yeah, it sounded pretty crazy. Sounded pretty crazy. You know, that event that you won at, and I, I've told some people this, but like when we we went to that bar that night, right? We went out to the the party, the Technetric party, and so we left. Sorry. <laughs> when we left, okay, we all stood around and talked, and we're all standing around having drinks. Like I look up, and the buses are not running. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so Taylor from Auto Shop Solutions and some other people are still standing around and like, oh, you know, okay, well, I'll just walk back. Okay. I did not know that there were like certain parts of Minneapolis you're not supposed to walk through. Yeah, that was a bad time, obviously. With That's yeah. true of every happened. city in America, except for Minneapolis, he thought. <laughs> and then he discovered, he's like, hey, it seems like there are bad parts of town in every city. It wasn't even that. I didn't have any troubles. Like I didn't, you know how you know? Yeah. You I know walked you know? all the way back. We had just had the riots and the George Floyd and all yeah, that Yeah, well, I mean, all these people. Are you from that area? I'm from uh, North Dakota, actually. So. Oh, okay. Well, so I'm, I'm like walking through the middle of the streets. It's like 2 a.m. And there's all these people in the streets. And they were super nice. And I stopped and talked to them for a few minutes. And we like talked. And, you know, like I probably thought, made fun of your voice. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And, and so like we're I'm walking and everybody's talking. And everybody's having a good time. And I'm like walking through them. And. I get back to the hotel. Who's making fun of whose voice? Well, see, so we get to make fun of people from the south, just like everybody makes fun of how we talk. So it's kind of a back you don't, and forth. You don't have a hard, like a strong accent. I'm not like, Norwegian, so that helps. So is that what it is? Yeah. It has to be really it's a lot of Scandinavian. And then the Scott Palava sounds like that. I know he doesn't think he does, but he, you can tell. And where he has he's the from. hands of it too. You know, the bare hands. <laughs> We're talking about accents here. Well, I know, but he's got the accent. Like you listen to him talking like, from up north. Yeah, he acts like it too. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> he acts a lot like you, David. That's why you hate him so much. Is because you everything so is much north or north to you. Everything is, is except for Florida. That's true. And South Carolina and Georgia and Texas and Alabama. No, that gets weird. Like we were just talking about that. Like you start to get anything past what alabama maybe mississippi it stops being like the south now it's texas and the southwest and it's different 
But it Florida's is its own thing. Do you consider yeah. Florida like the South? No. Exactly. Thank you. That's all I'm saying. Like the South is like Tennessee, Kentucky, North Carolina, South Carolina, Alabama, Mississippi, and that's it. That's the South. You know, I really think that you were likely at some point to be the subject of Florida man, right? You're going to be a, a headline article in Florida at some point. Why? Well, because you just do stupid things like that. I'm kind of like, used to it by now. I don't, I don't get it. Well, you know, you've seen all the articles, Florida man, and you can search your name or you, not your name. You can, you could search David or you could search your birth date, Florida I man and your birth date, and it will come up with something crazy that's happened and a Florida man's done it. And so uh, I'm just saying. Is that, that a thing? Is like yeah. a meme or something like a Florida man uh, in your birthday? Yeah, you can do that, and it comes up with. Have you tried that? I didn't know it was a thing. I, I, I'm, me neither. I'm learning all kinds of new things. What, what the <laughs> South is, Florida man. I mean, yeah. do you disagree on the South? No, I do not. Because Florida is the not North. the South. I don't. You, I, I get that it's Florida's south its of, own country, almost kind of. Yeah, no, I mean, and I can I can see that, but it's you just don't consider Florida South like, like if it, the 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 whole Southern hospitality. I think it ends once you go into Florida. <laughs> it's not the same. It's not the same. Look, look, just a random search. Just a random search. You type in Florida man and you put something up. Any birth date. Oh, yeah. Swallows 20 rocks of crap. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just telling you. Naked, naked Florida man performs strange dance at McDonald's before trying something. <laughs> This is a news week. This isn't like. <laughs> you didn't know about this? It's a thing, man. I, I, I'm familiar with the term Florida man, but I didn't realize uh, he was trying to have relations with a railing. <laughs> <laughs> what? That's what it says. Somebody put that in Newsweek. Fantastic. See, my point, though. Right, it, and the guy who swallowed the twenty rocks of crack led cops on a chase from Miami to the Upper Keys. Oh, he lived. Apparently, <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that your, was the first thing I went in my head. Is he lived? <laughs> like, oh, there's a whole website you can type in Florida man in your wet in your birthday and see what happened. That's awesome. <laughs> it really is. That's what I'm trying to say. And so, like, we were in Minneapolis, right? And and like, I walked back. And the only weird thing that happened is like right as I get ready to walk into the hotel, you know, the furries were there, yep. right? You remember the furries? Oh, yeah, yep. And yeah. right as I got ready to walk into the hotel, this lady, this like, I'm like on the phone with my wife talking to her about, you know, hey, this was the events of the night. I lost. It, yeah, it was terrible. It was terrible. I'm, I'm, he my feelings are still hurt. My feelings are still hurt. He, he still showed life. up. Yeah, so did I. Yeah, it was fun. We had a good time. Well, you won. That's well, why you were there. Yeah, I guess. But uh, didn't we have a couple runners up? Rachel showed up. She was a runner up. Yeah, mm-hmm. but the other guy, he's like, nah, I'm not showing up to accept my third place That's <laughs> trophy. <what. laughs> well, so <laughs> you showed up. You're well, like, yeah. I'm proud to be second place. No, I went to see Scott Palava. He, all, he way outdressed me, too, all every time. What? He What's that? way outdressed me. <laughs> I won, and he still outdressed me, though. Yeah. Well, so look. How dressed you? Oh, yeah. He's always dressed. Look at this. Look. He's got a setup. It's a whole thing. Yeah. Like, he knows, like, he gets his clothes out and he, I don't have to worry about what Is I'm going to wear. Is this what he wears at the shop, too? No. no, no, no. Okay. No. He wears these, like, retro traffic cones. 1960s <laughs> traffic cones. That's what they are. <laughs> what? <laughs> he, he gets on camera one day. He's wearing these. Stupidest orange something or another. It was the most ridiculous thing. I said, what the hell are you wearing? And he's like, well, you see what happened was I didn't pay attention to the catalog. And what was it? The price was really cheap or something? No, no, like, no. They had, they, it was one, they, they had an image of one uniform, mm-hmm. but they had discontinued that uniform. So they just substituted it to the ones that we ended up with. They're I not think that bad. The story. I think if we go back, he's like, "Yeah, they were super cheap." And we're like, "Yeah, those would fun. Be fine. You sure you don't want to see them? Nah, that's okay. All right." They showed up in these like orange monstrosities, 
And then at that point, he's like, well, I he's guess committed. we're going with it. Yeah. yeah. Like, what else well, is he going to do? He just ordered 8,500 of these. <laughs> so that's what he wears. So when you see the pictures of him in his, like, orange getup, it's a thing. Well, I mean, it, here's the cool thing is that little Scott is so short that he really does look like a traffic cone in <laughs> right? Because he's only about four foot tall. So you Everybody's know. four foot tall to you. We've already had this conversation. We're not four feet tall. We're just not six foot whatever. Some of us are just like, well, I, we, I am above average. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Which website did you look that up? I looked it up. I looked it up. We had this whole conversation. It's five foot seven in the U.S., okay? And I'm above five foot seven. I assume so that you wasn't on the Florida site. It was not on the Florida site. I think you, I think you got the wrong measurement, bro. I'm just going to tell you, you looked up the wrong average, man. <laughs> I don't know what you were trying to measure. <laughs> it's bad. <laughs> well, you know, so like in all seriousness, I did walk back to the hotel and this vagrant lady licks the side of my face as I'm walking <laughs> into the hotel. <laughs> like, and like I'm getting there and Chris is like standing. Did you tell in. your wife that part? She was on the phone when it happened. Oh, there you go. This lady just licked my face. <laughs> yeah, I, I like I went and scrubbed my face off. It smelled really terrible. It was awful. Um, and so like Chris is standing behind the glass door and I get to the door and it won't open. And the, the master lady, or Jones, uh, master. I don't oh. think Jones was there. Yet. Oh, yeah, Jones master, was, yeah, uh, Jones. Yeah. And so here comes, here comes the lady and she like opens the door and she reaches down at the floor and she unlocks it and she lets me in and she's like, what are you doing? I'm like, I'm coming in the hotel. And she's like, yeah, but you're like walking outside. Uh huh. We don't do that here. I just did. No, we don't do that here. Are, are you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Why? She's like, uh, never mind. <laughs> she just walks <laughs> off. I went to my room and she locked the door back. And you and I'm staying in a hotel right, right around the corner. You can't go into the lobby without a key. Really? The lobby without a key. Oh, is, is that a sign of things to come for the whole nation? I don't know. Maybe it's just rough. Two blocks to, to the <laughs> west. You go two blocks that way, and all well, of a I mean, sudden, uh, it's, it gets sketch. It gets sketchy. <laughs> well, I mean, like people were. I think it was Sam Johnson saying, like he posted a thing for anybody coming to the event, like, "Hey, make sure you lock your car. Make sure you get this stuff out of your car because, like, it's a problem. Like, it's a known problem here. So, yeah. Like he was posting it all over the place, saying, like, we hey, did drive by a sign that said, uh, "Choose donation or donate wisely." Yeah. Stop. Oh. Paying the panhandlers. I mean, I, I expected San Diego to be bad when we were in San Diego. San Diego was San not, Diego wasn't bad at all. No. no, there was hardly anything. It was okay. Yeah. Every yeah. time I've been there, it's pretty good. Yeah, but I mean, like you get you get in other areas. L.A. is unbelievable. I haven't been in L.A. since I went like sideways. Yeah, I mean, this is pretty rowdy out here. Dallas was pretty bad. Austin was terrible. Austin was the worst that I think we've been to yet. That was – they cleaned that all up, though. Did they? Yeah. All that's gone. They – they um, we went to ETI Tool Tech in 2021, was it? Mm -hmm. And the tent cities were oh. everywhere. You could – like, miles you could walk and miles. Into business, man. Oh. Like, you, you started to walk up somewhere, and there were people asleep on the stairs to the business. Jeez. And so and, – and as a matter of fact, we were there when that shooting happened. That night, like right before we left, I you I was like looking out my window at where those people had been shot at that bar. Oh yeah, out of the hotel right there. It was crazy. Well, they they cleaned all that up. They just they told them they couldn't stay there. And you know, here in in Denver, um, there's there's this like uh, streetcar in this outdoor mall, and that's like the big tourist attraction. You can walk up and down this this whole thing, and it got filled with with tent cities and people living on the street or whatever. Well, they needed to do a whole bunch of renovation. So they, they just came in and told them you got to move. Yeah. You can't be here. And so they all migrated North. So you go up four or five streets to the North and that's where they're hanging out. All, set all of the cool restaurants are not all of them, but a lot of the cool restaurants are four or five streets North. So we're setting reservations for just some, some nice restaurant. And me and my family get out, and I mean, we're walking by tents and you know yeah. these setups with all these homeless people living. That's crazy on the side of the street. Man. 
and and my wife's like, yeah, they used to be downtown. They're not there anymore. Now they're here. <laughs> it's like okay, so comforting. I know. Do you deal with that in North North Dakota? Not really. No. Uh, <laughs> most people get the heck out of there before the weather turns. So yeah, we, we freeze to death. In right? the summertime, you get a little bit, but that goes away pretty quickly. Nobody yeah. can really live in you know negative thirty below. Yeah, <laughs> so the tent's not going to work. So <laughs> yeah, but is Minneapolis that warmer? Uh, not a whole lot. I mean, we get the wind chills and stuff too. So I mean, it's not uncommon in January to see negative sixty, negative seventy with wind. That's insane. Yeah, but there are homeless people in Minneapolis. Is yeah. it just a city thing? Like, a, are you in a? There is no urban area in North Dakota. Not really. I mean, like where I live, it's about three hundred thousand people. So yeah, but you, is it spread out? Yeah, I mean, it's like four towns kind of combined. Yeah, separated right. by the river between minnesota and north dakota so yeah i don't know like three hundred thousand sounds like a lot but then you get into a more densely packed area yeah, like minneapolis like, or something like that. that's a whole but minneapolis is considered a smaller city compared to chicago yeah, chicago's sure. massive yep. or, chicago didn't seem as bad as this no well again they what? get they get lower temperatures though too yeah that's true no i mean chicago wasn't nearly as bad as what is right here denver here yeah it gets pretty cold here. Not. No. That's insane. Yeah. <laughs> you can't live, live through that. Why would you want to? Well, that's why he's a successful shop owner, right? Is because he can like tolerate very uncomfortable things and it just is doesn't Is that what it is? Well, cars break in the wintertime too. I mean. So it's just guaranteed business yeah. all the time? Uh, it's it's very busy in the cold. It's busier than A lot than of any. rust? uh yes and no i mean i'd say we have more rust than anywhere else in the country does probably than like pennsylvania have you been in pennsylvania it's oh. miserable there oh. and they have a lot of rust yeah i think i would say we have rust they don't salt the roads like they used to and all the stuff so that's helped a lot yeah yeah but cars are made not as well as they used to be either, so, so it doesn't matter whether yeah. they salt it or I not mean, the sheet metal on out. these things are nothing yeah. so it doesn't take much for a box site or something to rust out on a fairly new car really Huh. We'll see, you know, thirteens, fourteens with completely rusted out box sides and holes through them, and so. So how? One shop, two shops, ten. You have ten. Yeah. Ten. Yeah. What is wrong with you? <laughs> this is who you bring us. Deranged <laughs> individuals. I enjoy negative sixty degrees and ten times the shop ownership fun. You know, I, I'm just kidding because Dan, what's his name? Doug Grills. Doug Grills. Doug Grills is awesome. Mm -hmm. Just, he talks so effortlessly and it's just genius coming out. He doesn't realize it, but it's effortless. Like he's not trying to sound smart. He just he is just smart. Is smart. Yeah. Yeah. There's a difference yeah. anyway. And, and he goes, we're having this conversation. It was really good. It was last year at mm -hmm. Ratchet and Wrench. Yeah. yeah. And uh, he goes, yeah, you got to get past three. After three, there's layers. I don't deal with anything because I've got people, mm -hmm. layers of people underneath me. What, what was your, he said it was three, but what, what did you find it to be? I would say three or four was kind of yeah. when it started. Um, then after five, it got even easier. Really? So at yeah. five and above, it gets, it's a lot easier with, if you have the right layers put together. Yeah. Right. So. It was that what you got out, like you set out to, I'm going to own 10? I honestly wanted to own one, and it's turned into 10. So <laughs> there was no plan. By accident? Know. Did you just trip over the yeah, other I nine just, I kind of fell out. <laughs> what? <laughs> you know, it was, it was one of those things that I started out, I wanted to just be my own boss. And then it got successful, and I'm like, okay, I can't handle the demand. Added right. another one. Then I added another one, and the, these opportunities just kept coming. And uh, then we're like, okay, we're, maybe we're on to something that's different here. Yeah. And that's what's kind of sparked. You know, this was over a short time period. This was not like years and years and years and years. Yeah, I'm 14 and a half years in right now. That's so, awesome. But we added five stores last year in a four and a half month time span. And that yeah. Was, that was more than I'd recommend anybody doing at yeah. once. We had shops that closed like a day apart from each other. Uh, that was a little stressful, but uh, we made it work. Yeah. So, but I've got really good people. That's really helped me a lot. So, yeah. So, I, 
so when you start getting into i'm going to start snatching up these are these just like are you buying these you're not buying them with cash or you're financing the deal or you're so, buying the land and the, the so business we, we buy or? both um i do cash deals on all my operation side assets all that stuff and then we have we've built up a pretty good real estate portfolio so i go in with cash buy the real estate everything and then when i go to buy the next one i finance the one i bought whatever and get my right. cash replenished and just keep moving that's that. pretty slick yeah it's been a good model for us that you know i'm in i own a bunch of residential real estate and some commercial real estate Do you have it all separated then the a certain company yeah buys got, the, the real estate got, and then they rent it out yeah and, i've got like 25 llc's we have 64 pieces of real estate we own right now hey fun fact the irs just announced did you see, did you see this uh, i'm not sure the irs just announced that they have created a brand new division oh to just handle pass-through entities yep I did really see, i did see that they are going to specifically target pass-through entities because they feel that these are the entities that are not paying their fair share not the corporations because they may deal with double taxation but the ones that are not dealing with double taxation we need to fix that (laughs) Um, i will apparently be filing to become a c-corp so you know those corporate losses are going to start piling up i'm just telling you i don't i don't think you have to how have you been operating 10 years and you haven't made any money <laughs> Ten thousand plus dollars of losses every single year I, you know my only fear is is that it might be accurate for you it is entirely accurate <laughs> that's what i'm worried you about. should see my tax returns you never make money Ever. i don't i don't make money well we've had this conversation like have you you don't listen to the podcast but at, <laughs> <laughs> we tend to, our demographic is two shops at third shop they're like if these guys click they stop listening anyway so uh cecil bullard are you familiar right yeah good old cecil believes in profit and you gotta make money and this that and the other okay just not me it's good for everybody else not me i don't want to make any money zero none none um not a dime We've been having these conversations lately, okay? And and so I gotta I gotta choose my words carefully here. I wanna, Don't insult the man. I'm not gonna insult the man. I'm we try- do find you crazy. I'm just trying not I to insult you. I appreciate that actually. Do you? Yeah. You know <laughs> what's David Goggins? Are you familiar, David? Mm-hmm. He says, "I'm not crazy. I'm just not you." Is that how you feel about us? Eh, we're all the same. It's just we have different ways we're doing we're not the same deer we're not you okay. think we are we're not well that's where i was going that was that was the topic right because let, let's look at terminations for example okay david struggles with that okay and i've gotten better at it right i've gotten better at it but but the concept of having an organization which would need to let someone go like that and, and, you know, Seth was in here earlier talking about a situation where it was, well, you're not performing. And so, because you're not performing, bye. Right. And Seth said Can that so yeah. effortlessly. Mm-hmm. And David's like, I, I cannot do that. I just cannot do that. I, I, I don't feel okay with that. And, and in the, the same thing with all the issues that are, are present in the business. How do you, because, you know, <clears throat> I'm talking about a, a friend of mine recently who's been going through something with service advisors. Had two service advisors that were well established with the organization. It wasn't anything the organization did wrong, but they retired, and they kind of knew it was coming, and they just thought, "Well, I'll just replace them." And it it was a multi store deal, and it didn't work the way they planned. And all of a sudden, like there's this downhill slide in multiple stores, and and I just don't know that I can handle that kind of like pressure, that kind of thing happening. You know, this dude can't even fire one person without freaking out about it well now i've got a team of 100 people i've got a team of 30 yeah people, i think that's people. what the issue then becomes is not necessarily because it's you're not well you don't have to directly deal with it but and and that's what he was saying about seth it's like seth's not gonna fire anybody he's got people that fire them you i'm sure you have mm-hmm. people that fire them too and 
if I was that far removed from it, I think it wouldn't be an issue. If I was one of your store managers, I wouldn't have an issue with it. I, I have fired so many people over. I think that's years. the difference is the connection that you have when you're in a small environment. It's yeah. like I struggled firing people and I had one or two stores. It's like I had a very strong connection with these are my family. Yeah. And I had to start as we grew, I had to start treating it as a business because that's what we're doing. Okay. This so is a business. how do you make that switch? It's a mindset and it wasn't something I just, I woke up one day and be like, oh, um, you guys are number one, two and you're number this. Like, that's not how it works. I mean, these are still my family. These people are important right. to me, but I had to slowly work at, okay, I have to separate the relationship from you performing at your job and you showing up for your teammates and everything. And that was the really eye opening moment, I guess, was like, I had to separate the two. Yeah. Like we can still go out and have a beer or we can still do that. But when, when it's work time, like this is a different relationship. This yeah. is a work relationship. And that a lot of owners, you know, with, I do coaching as well. And like, that is a thing. Like a lot of owners struggle with that. And, and, you know, maybe there's levels to this because I'm, I'm thinking about the guy that was in my class a few minutes ago. Right. And he said, well, you know, basically he said that won't work here. You don't understand. And, and, and so we fuss about that all the time you don't understand that won't work here but we're basically doing the same thing are we doing the same thing i mean to a degree right we're saying that that we don't want to grow to multiple stores for that reason we don't want to grow to multiple stores because we don't want it to become something like that and i'm not please don't misunderstand i'm not saying anything bad i you know we've been talking about this a little bit lately where um (laughs) it's it's not it's not the multiple store ownership that 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 that's fine with me. I have no problem with it. The multiple layers is even appealing. Yeah. Right. Yeah, of course. The, that mindset shift and the work that has to come after that is what I don't want to do. One, I, I almost think I'm incapable of it. I just, I don't, I don't think I have it in me. I didn't. And for what I it's did. worth, I don't think I had it in me either. And like, but I, you did. I had to work at it, though. Okay, but I, I guess what I'm saying is, I think deep down, you had that dog in you. You had it. It was in there. You just had to tap into it. It's there. I don't. I don't think I got that. I, I just don't think I have. I. I don't. I really don't think I have it. But even then. The decision isn't isn't just to 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 make them the the shift and say, well, I, I've got to start looking at this as a business. I think also you have to see the other side of that and think that is a better situation for me or more appealing than where I'm at right now. Does that make sense? Oh, yeah, for sure. Like you have to make that decision as well and going. Not only I want more stores, I want more volume, I want more revenue, I want more profitability, I want more comfort, I want whatever, yeah. right? I want yeah. the boats. And in the process, then I know I need to take these steps. I want the boats more than it's uncomfortable making these decisions and these productive strides discomfort. And, and it's not even productive discomfort. It's it's deciding that it's productive. It is discomfort, but it's then deciding that that is more productive for me. I need to make these decisions. And I think I struggle with that because it's okay. Let, let, let me make that mindset, sh- mindset shift and say, I'm absolutely going to treat this more of a business than anything else. But why, why do I want to do that? And how is that? how is that benefiting me? Not just financially it would, but that's it in my, in my, in my estimation, and not, I'm not speaking for you or saying no, that that's how it is. There's a different way to look at that though, too, because for instance, just expanding isn't just about making more money. So we created something special in our one shop and we were able to recreate that again and again. And now we've impacted multiple families lives. So making that hard decision on one person, is that better for the group that you've built and you've changed yeah. their lives and the community's lives that you're in? 
And I think that's the bigger picture that you have to think about. Yeah. You know, I, 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 I can understand that. I think you do get a point. Now, you're nowhere near it. Um, I, I worked for a, a parts store. And when I joined them, I had just come from a much larger organization into one that was still scrapping. And it felt different. It was yeah. it was cool. Yeah. I could I could talk to the CEO. You know, he was a phone call away. He still took phone calls. Yep. <laughs> and you could email him. And you could you could talk to any of the corporate like the head, the C suite. And it was probably maybe two or three years and the growth went from steady to exponential. And all of a sudden the C-suite was no longer accessible. Same people. There were just multiple layers now. And you, as a lowly store manager, running a multi-million dollar operation here for you, right? But you were no longer in the group. Like, you couldn't. So, it it changed. It it changed. It has to change, though, because as you do But for the worse, you were no longer part of this, like, the culture shifted. It wasn't a small town. We're all family. We're working together. We're the scrappy, small company that's yeah. fighting the big boys. It, that, that went away entirely. You are now one of the big boys. You are now a number. You're employee number 118375, and that's it. And that, that shift was difficult for me. And see, I that's like something it. that we really – work on at the store some from the top down that culture continues to be ingrained in every person from the store leaders down yeah so like what i started this business as is still there to this day with 10 stores but it's been ingrained down through the teams of like what we are who we're about and that communication is there between all of these guys and they hold each other accountable to make sure that our ethics, our standards, our core values are being met every single day. Sure. So were you a technician? Yeah. And so you started this as a technician. Yes. What was your reason for starting the business? I wanted to change people's perception of the industry. Okay. That was truly what I wanted. I had no, if I'd made a good living, I was happy. I was a good technician. What, what did you think their perception was at the time? That a, it's a bad industry. Right. We take advantage of people, and I witnessed it firsthand. I was a dealership tech for most of my career, and yeah. I couldn't believe how many times a car would come in, and it had 30,000 miles on it, and they sold every flush on it, and they yeah. look at the history, they were just done 6,000 miles ago, and I'm like, this this is not okay. Yeah. And that was really what kind of pushed me over the edge, is like, this is there's got to be a better way to do this. How did, how did you feel as a technician in those environments? What, what, how did, how did the industry treat you? Did you have any feelings about like you were, because, you know, right now we, we look at that, we look at that presentation and I, I had seen that presentation weeks ago because Chris hooked it up with it. And, and we look at that presentation and we say, those numbers don't look good. Right. And there's nothing, there's no immediate solution to the numbers that were brought in that presentation at lunch. Mm-hmm. Right. We're, 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 we're going to ride this one out, right? Yeah. There's no way around it. Was there ever a point when you said, I want to treat people differently. I want them to feel differently working for me. Were you ever treated poorly as a technician? Uh, yes and no, I guess. I mean, I was, luckily I flew kind of to the top a lot. So like yeah. I did have that, but I felt powerless even like I was in yeah. fairly large dealerships, 20, 25 technicians. Yeah. And I was a foreman and I had no power. Yeah. I couldn't inflict change. I couldn't have a voice to ownership. And that did, I think it did affect how I operate my business, Yeah, you know, and how, how we've hired and what people we've brought on and all those pieces. So let me ask you this then is because that, that shift and that move, right. And and one of the things that I talked about in my class today was, was that the why has to be substantial to go from one store to multiple stores. The why has to be substantial to actually grow the business. And, and just because I want to work on cars is not enough. Right? For sure. You said, well, you know, I want to change the industry. I want to make things better. Well, what is there more to that? Why is there, 
you know, now because like you've developed, you're, you've got a family, you've got all of these things and you've got all these people underneath you. Did that why transform and develop and turn into something more as you progressed? Yeah. Well, now, I, you know, I've, I think I was asked a month or so ago, like how I measure success. And like, I, I really look at that as like, okay, are we making an impact in our communities? Am I making an impact in my team members' lives? Yeah. And lastly, are my kids proud of me? Yeah. Like if, amen, all, if I check all those boxes, I'm successful. I don't care what's in the bank. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Well, and, and so I guess the, the reason for my question is, is those shop owners who are sitting here saying, I need to find my destination. I need to figure out where I'm going. And, you know, owning a shop, because like when I started with the shop, it wasn't, there was no thought process beyond owning the shop. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, this is just what I'm doing. It, it didn't have a thought like this is the trajectory that I'm trying to accomplish. And this is where I want to be. And, you know, so I went through this change when we moved into the new shop, because now all of a sudden the thing that I'd worked for for years is here. And I'm like, oh, shit. Like, uh, I don't know what to do now. Right. And like, luckily, we we met challenges. And, and you know, I never thought I would find myself saying, well, thank God the numbers are not what they're supposed to be. But I really am saying that because I'm like, hey, I've got a challenge in front of me. I can do something with that because I need that challenge. I need something to fight back with. Yeah. And so I'm just curious, like, what what was it that pushed you to say, okay, store one, here I am. I'm right here. I've, I've accomplished store one. What is the next part of this trajectory? What made you say, okay, it's time to go to two? So for me, like, you know, we I started in a, a one hoist back of a shoe and tarp repair shop. Okay. Like I had no desire to be anything more than that. And then we expanded. I bought the building eight months later. I'm like, holy crap, I've arrived. Like I've, I've done it. I yeah. kind of like what you just said. Yeah. And we filled those bays and I filled them with good people. And then I still had more good people wanting to work for me. I had still customers that needed our help. And I'm like, I can't help these people. Yeah. And so I'm like, okay, the only way to do this is to look at how do we expand? Do we, you know, and we, that was a tough decision. Yeah. And ultimately, yeah, we decided, okay, the only way we're going to help this and, and have a bigger impact is to expand. Right. And that was really what happened that. And every time we've done something, the, the goal is just kind of pushed further ahead. But yeah. I was probably at four or five stores before I really realized what goals were and like how to adjust them right. as you're reaching them and stretch them and things like that. Yeah. Well, you know, I've got a good friend of mine who is, is, um, really brilliant when it comes to the property game and doing stuff like that. And, and I've watched him take, you know, and, and he, he had, he was already uber successful well before the property thing started happening. And so he just had the potential sitting there. And so it was like, okay, I have this potential. And, and like, for me, I'm big about optimizing and maximizing whatever I'm doing. I, I enjoy that process. And and I think for him, it was the same thing is like, I'm going to take this, and I have the potential sitting here. There's no way that I can stand to let this potential sit in the bank account or sit right here. And I'm not going to do something with it. I have to do something with this. And I have to take it and make something else. Oh. And so then he does that. And he has more potential now. So he says, okay, well, I've done this. Well, i got to do something with that potential. And it, it was, not, in my opinion, I don't think it has anything to do with money for him. No. It's just like, hey, I just, I, I like doing this. I enjoy this. This is like my job now. This is what I do. And, and you know, I, I think that... I think for us, in a lot of ways, that that seems so far fetched. It's not far fetched, but it, it's it seems so far away from where we're at to be able to take that next step and start making it happen. And and I think a lot of it is the stress. You know, we talk about the the friend that's got the shop where the service advisor things happening. Like my biggest fear is I go start multiple shops, and then like something happens with the staff and I lose somebody. I'm like, oh my god, I'm back on the counter. Something's happening again. I have to go back and I have to solve these problems. Like I'm worried about that transition. And I, I guess when you get to three to five shops, like it solves that problem. But man, I am really nervous. When, about when, you, you don't make any sense. You are just trading one problem for another. You're just talking about how you need the challenge. And then like, okay, well, then I go, know, go do the thing. My point is, but is that, that it doesn't that, matter how many shops you have. These problems all exist. Exactly. And that's what I'm like, saying is just, those are the problems I don't want. Like I'm good with certain problems. <laughs> so but you don't this, want to own a shop. This staffing problem thing but is like. Do you want to be an employee? Because I mean, that's what's no, going to happen. No, I don't want to be an employee. <laughs> you know, like 
talking about working the counter and stuff like that terrifies me at this point. Hey, dude, I'm telling like, you, like I will get physically ill. <laughs> <laughs> David, <laughs> I'm, I'm good for about two days, and then you better want to oh, block yeah, me up. I'm good for a few hours. Yeah. David, I will, get exhausted. David I just can't will do literally it. start yeah, calling it's real estate agents, dude. I mean, if he's got to work at the counter, somebody calls in sick. Dude's dude's going through the yellow pages. Real estate, real estate, real estate. <laughs> Who's going to buy this? <laughs> you know, I swear to God, I've never I seen somebody. I don't know people calling sick. It's really rare. It's very rare. That's not that's not the issue. I here here's here's the thing. Like, I get the whole. I I think we are built to struggle and and constantly have to fight across like, the bear. Yeah. And like that, that's, that is just humankind. There's no way to get around it. And I think you get to a situation like you're in where you're generating a ton of money and it's okay. It's no longer, how am I going to feed my kids? That's that struggle has gone. And so you get to a certain level of comfort and success that you have to find something to fight against. Yep. 100%. You have to. 100%. Everybody does. Yeah. My struggle with it is that I feel, again, please don't think I'm judging or anything like that. I feel like the goals that are then having are, are then self imposed and contrived in my mind. Because what do they matter? Like, who cares? Your your organ this store number eight needs to do one point two million. It's only at nine hundred thousand. Okay, now the challenge is how do we get it to one point two? Because that's its potential. It needs to hit one point two, and it's at nine hundred. So that that then becomes the struggle and the challenge. Where I would look at it and go, I, I don't care. Like it missed its goal by three hundred thousand. Okay, I do, I don't care. I don't care, and so. I would then not be the right person to be in that particular situation because everything would look meaningless and contrived to me because it's just, it's just a number on a piece of paper. It, they're just like, it's, it's profit or maybe it's not. And it's like, okay, now I got to pay some more tax. Like all of that seems so petty in my mind. And it's just like, it's, I don't want to do that. I don't want to fight to get my mindset right to then get to the point where I can effortlessly, not effortlessly, but fire someone knowing that I have to, because my organization has to grow and that person is holding us back. Why does the organization need to grow? Well, because I think we can do $1.2 million in my store and we're only doing 900,000 and that, that employee is holding us back that 300,000. So I don't think I'd ever look at it from that capacity. I think like when you look at letting someone go in your organization when you're a small shop, like I think about people that affect the overall group. I don't care if yeah. your group is three people or 10 people, one person ruins that group. And yeah. if they're not contributing part to the success of the team, because you guys are a team, whether you think it or not, you're a team, whether you're three people, 10 people, yeah. 100 people, you're a but, team. But again, take, take one step past that, though, the success of the team in what capacity? So your people doing well, you doing well, everyone that works in your organization doing well, one yeah. person can affect that. I, I agree with that. That's absolutely true. It's absolutely true. And I don't care what your team size is at that point. I don't care how many stores you have. It's relevant in yeah. every one of them. Sure. Yeah. You know, and, and, and to, you know, Lucas's point, like you talked about, you have to step in and you like these challenges. Well, what I found with a lot of single shop owners, the reason they don't take the next step is they like being that person. Yeah. The oh, yeah. They, they like, they yes. have, like, it's, it is a thing. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And I had that problem. Like, yeah. I had to be the hero, I had to be the yeah. guy that had the answer. And the minute I actually didn't, that was when I probably grew the most. Yeah. yeah. And, and the the people in your organization start to grow, mm -hmm. right? Because now all of a sudden they're allowed to make the mistake. They're allowed to learn on their own. They're given the power to make decisions and and see the consequences. And they you, you find the true leaders in your organization that begin to expand. And I think my greatest accomplishment is the impact I've had on all these individuals' lives that work for us. Yeah. You know, like you're impacting whatever your team size yours is. And you're same with you. And I'm doing the same with my team, regardless of the size of it. 
that's something you should be proud of, regardless of you do one stores, 10 stores, a hundred stores. Okay. I, I can, uh, I, I understand what you're saying. I, I guess for, for example, some of the struggle that I'm having though, is that when you say, well, this one person is affecting everyone doing well, I, I question just well in general and go, what does that even mean? It, and, and here's, here's, uh, I'll try to flesh this out a little bit. Um, the presentation we had yesterday, the guy up there is, is killing it. Right. And he kept talking over and over about how his team, I got guys making $200,000 a year and a hundred thousand dollars a year. And yada, yada, yada. You get to a certain point where it stops being necessary. I sound like a communist. This is terrible. <laughs> well, I've always had the question, how much is enough? And that's not, I think on my side, when I talk about the team doing well, I'm talking about your home life, your mental well yeah. health, like yeah. enjoying coming to work because one person can cause that whole thing to oh boy. It can make you miserable for everybody. Like, and those are the things that I, I talk about. To you, David. I'm trying to get him to tell me how to fix this. <laughs> well, and I mean, so we, David and I have had some like really hardcore heart to hearts. After we've he had, he says this a lot in the podcast. Wow, we had this heart. My really good friend. We, you know what we figured out yesterday? He doesn't have any friends. Yeah, just David. That makes that sense. Makes sense. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. yeah, and he hates me, and I hate him, and it works out pretty well. His one friend is how tells him constantly, <laughs> "I hate you." So much. that's why we're friends. And so, you know, we we especially <laughs> lately. Did you just <laughs> <get out? laughs> no. You just got shorter. I was like, what happened? Yeah. I know. It's terrible. These chairs, man. Did I deflate? It was like, did I depress you all of a sudden? Just like, this is my you one friend. Like, is he now, is he now considered below average height? Yeah, I did that to make you feel better. <laughs> so, uh, no. <laughs> so, you know, we, we've, we've had people on the show, and we've talked about how successful they've been. And they've shared these things that they've been through. And these steps that they took and that, that, you know, they've worked really hard, but then it becomes pretty clear. Like they're looking at their team and they're saying, you're a number and here's what I need from you. Even though they don't say it, the, the, the mechanics of it still come down to you're just a, a piece of the puzzle and the puzzle isn't right. You don't fit. You're gone. And I, I, I think the best way, just like how you put it, it's it, holistically, it's not just the numbers. Because, yeah, you have somebody that's. I, I think the most pivotal, souring the group, it's, it does affect your, your I, mentality and your approach. And I think the most pivotal thing you've ever said to me, though, was. Me or him? You. No. Was you. It is. Is this really what this has to be? Like for me to find that success, for me to go to that next step, I have to become ruthless. Do I have to become there's somebody a, that I'm not? That's all I was. Th- you know, I I was I said it nice when I said it's not it's 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 the dog in you. You got to have that dog in you. Of course, yeah. I'm yeah. just saying, but I mean, like but, you, but even as a single operator, you have to have fight in you. No, I mean, it, no, you can be a ball of mush and still run a shop. Not well, not successfully. In the traditional sense, we see a lot of them. No, not really. Quite a few. I I think I think they either have the dog in them. I think even the, they even do have the dog in them. They just I think the biggest thing that holds them back is like he was saying they they want to be the I want to be the man. Yeah. I want to be the guy. Mm-hmm. And so they every everything's got to come to me. Everything like and I think that's most of. People, I, I think it's really rare to, to find a, a, a mush ball that just, he just, he's got to, I got to get up and go somewhere. And so that's what you do. You know who was like that? He doesn't listen to the podcast, so it doesn't want to. Dude from Nebraska mm-hmm. with his uh, his wife that was always like, wah, wah, wah. what was his name? Kirk? Kurt? Kurt? I don't remember. Oh. Nice people. Sweet people. They really yeah. are. Yeah. Sweet people. But he... I do. They did not have a dog in them at all in any way, shape, or form. I think in some capacity, even if to start a business, you have to have something. Right. 
there's something there, regardless if you're a mush ball or not. Yeah, you had enough that. to do something. Because 95% of the world don't even go that far. Well, I mean, look at how many technicians we see that are going out and starting a mobile thing. They're going out and they're starting their own business. And they don't they don't understand what's associated with it. Mm-hmm. And and so I'm sure you've seen it. I know we've seen it. A lot of them that later come back and say, like, holy shit, I mm-hmm. did not know what I was getting into. Right. And then they never transition to owner. They remain technician. And and as bad Does, as it, what's wrong with that though? I don't like think there's just I'm not nothing wrong with it. Self employed, then that's well, how they want to roll. The conversation we had with Nathan yesterday is that, that at that point you have to decide like the I don't want to say it doesn't have value, but this is never going to be more than a job, right? Or if it's he, going he to be. He has accepted it and embraced it, and kudos to him for it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And 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 that's something extremely hard to do when you get to that point and you realize that. And, and I think it's going to suit him well, the fact that he embraced that, hey, I, I've got a disability policy because if something happens to me, the business is no more. That's it. It's done. I know that. Right. I've got life insurance for that reason. And so I think if you're in that spot, you at least have to embrace it. You have to say like, hey, I'm not going to be more. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. And so I think that's what gives me hope of the idea. If I ever decide to expand to multiple stores is that. I was there at one point and I never saw myself where I'm at right now. And then so now I'm in I went from three bays to ten bays. And I never saw the revenue and I never thought that I would have the potential that I have Absolutely. right now. And so now I feel like, oh, well, maybe I can go to the next level. Maybe mm-hmm. I do have opportunity to do something more. And and I, I'm, I'm bad to question myself. So I'm always like, maybe I shouldn't have gone with a shop that big. Maybe I should have done this. Maybe I should have done that. I told him not to. I thought he was nuts, but whatever. <laughs> it worked out pretty cool. Did it? Yeah, you're you just it. started it. What are you talking about? Uh, it worked out pretty cool because you're going to have your very own podcast studio. When you sell your shop for a case of honey buns, you know, I've got an office for you. You can just sit in it, complain, and moan and bitch all day. <sighs> that kind of goes the, back to resetting the goal, though. Like, yeah. you never thought you could do this. You achieved it. And then you're like, okay. See, well, that's the part that I feel is contrived. You have to reset the goal. Like, I don't want to reset anything. That's the. That's, and that's, there's nothing that's wrong with that. Is no, that, there is something wrong. Because <laughs> 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 you, not you everybody cannot, wants to go he, he, 100 he, miles an what, hour. What, what, no, no, what you, I'm saying that there, there has to be, there the struggle has to be there, and it has to be there. You, you can't, you cannot, because otherwise you succumb, you succumb to apathy, and you, you, you see these people. They're, they're like, we. I had this dear friend i love him to death his name's scott he's the coolest guy you will ever meet in your life that guy spends the entire day uh playing on his computer gaming or whatever and smokes a lot of weed and he does drugs recreationally on the weekends that's his fun thing that's all he does in his parents basement he's not a, a kid he's in his 30s but that's all he's done he's, he's that's all he's ever done and that's all he'll ever do his parents will die, leave him some money. They have a lot. They'll leave him some money, and he'll spend it on, but they've got it set up where he's not going to blow all of it. But they had to do that because they know how their, their son is. That That is, in my estimation, wasted human existence. Like You're not contributing to anything. There's no struggle. Like It is just his, his heart. The hardest part of his day is getting out of bed. That's the hardest part of his day. He's got to get out of bed now. And the only reason he gets out of bed is like, eh, I want to get high. I don't want to need to sleep anymore. I want to go get some, some drugs. <laughs> and so that that's the whole of his existence. The nicest guy in the world. And he's so funny and, and it's sad to see somebody like that, but that's just the level of apathy that if you don't have that struggle, if that struggle is not in front of you, like that's what, that's what you turn into. That's what humans turn into. You see it all the time. You see it all the time. And in this country, in particular, we have that luxury that we can do that. We can turn it into that. And even if you don't have that that safety net that he has, what ends up happening? You live out in a tent, and your entire day revolves around the struggle. Then becomes I'm going to go get high, or you just go hang out in a tent and whatever. Or you crash and friends. People live like that. 
So I think you do. You have to have that struggle. But it for the, the I guess the problem is that the struggle, if it if it feels meaningless, it, it it's hard for me to do it. It's hard for me to like go in and I'm gonna give it my all because like that goal. I don't care about that goal. Yeah. And and so that, that's just, what I was. It's so like at the end of the day, we're just meat bags. We're going to die. And like, and even if, because he talks about legacy all the time. It's like, yeah, in a hundred years, nobody's going to remember you. You're going to, and even at best, you'll be a plaque on the wall. Yeah. And you'll be a slide on somebody's presentation in 1942, my grandpa. You, you see what I'm saying? I'm sorry. I was just making fun no, of you. No, I'm going to make you making fun of me. I'm used to it. Hey, so here's what's interesting is like I look at you, right? Like he doesn't – the numbers don't mean anything to him, right? And I sit here, and, and I'm not even at the shop, and it's kind of like a game for me. I'm looking at the numbers, and I'm like, we can do better. We can do better. We can do better. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go, right? I enjoy that. It has nothing to do with beating my team up to get the numbers. It's I enjoy that challenge. I enjoy seeing what we're capable of. I enjoy pushing things to its absolute limits. I remember when I was a little kid, man, I used to take my little Tonga trucks and I would load them with dirt as heavy as I could to see if they would turn over. And I would see how much dirt I could put in them and push them up on a hill before they turned over. You know, I love that. That's 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 my thing. And like you, you don't care. You're just like, I, I don't care if it makes money. I just have to have this to pay the bills. And so, you, so he does care if it makes money because he has to have this. So I don't I mean, even. Yeah, and, but uh, it, <laughs> I don't even know if he cares about that. I mean, yeah, well, <laughs> it gets stressful when you don't. Um, <laughs> I, I I started I started the business because I was unemployable. I didn't. I I couldn't go work for someone else making the decisions. I saw the business, the organization, turn in a direction that I just couldn't. I couldn't jive with. I fought it for forever and it was depressing. And I, and I remember sitting in the car, just willing myself to go into work because I didn't want to do this anymore. And I never wanted to feel that way again. So I ended up opening up my own business and you know, I, I was in the field and I'm going to open a shop that's different and treats people well and doesn't sell the flesh and like the, that whole thing. I was the same thing. Mm -hmm. And, but I, over the years, you do like, oh, okay, I've got a model built here that I can pay the bills. And now I've got a model that I can make some money. And that's all fine. But at some point you're like, okay, so we did this much this year. All of a sudden you're like, you look at next year and you're like, so we're going to go do more? Okay. Why? What's, what's the point? I mean, why do I care? And now it's an interesting perspective that you said, well, okay, well, we can improve the lives of more people. I don't know that I've improved their lives. I've given them somewhere that's interesting to work at. It's comfortable. The, and I, I, I want to see it as a vehicle <laughs> towards something different. Because that's what it is for me. But comfortable is not going to be a, a vehicle to different. It's going to be status quo because that's what comfort is. I'm okay with status quo. I'm okay with status quo. The status quo, however, has to. There has to be a certain threshold. They, it can't dip down. It cannot be apathy, or or even indifference. So it can't be below the line. Cannot be below. But it, the line is very low. It's low. Because for me, it's it. I, I do I. I need to find something to challenge me to struggle against. The, but for me, it's like I just I'm looking for interesting things to do. The challenge for me is how do I raise my kids properly? The challenge for me is how do I maintain my spiritual well being? The challenge for me is 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 different in that I don't necessarily care about making an extra quarter mil next year. I don't care. It, it's it's if I do great if I, I don't it's whatever I don't want to have to not pay the bill I want to get the bills paid right but I don't know that that just 
paying the bills or or whatever, like expanding out and just having more people in there, I'm having a hard time making my staff understand. I'm, not all of them, but some of them just don't. They don't get it. They don't get it. It's I want to get comfortable. The line is very low. Underneath that line is indifference. And that, I, I have one that's dipped into indifference. Okay, that's the line, dear. You can't jump, dip below the line. You've dipped below the line. The other ones are like, hey, I, I want something more. I want more challenge. And, and I'm trying to get them to understand the challenge for you isn't, hey, how do I make more money? You make you make enough money. <laughs> you make more than I ever did before I opened a shop. You do. And what are you what are you doing? You're flipping tinkering on cars. You make pretty good money. So what what's the next step from past that? You've gotten you can pay the bills now. What's the next step? Do we find something fun and challenging and interesting? And is it is it racing cars? Is it what do you like to do? For me, it became podcasting. Is that like tinkering with this stuff right it had afforded me the business afforded me that opportunity i want to do that for my employees too i don't know that that's scalable i don't know that it is because it be it requires a certain level of of intimate knowledge of that person to make it viable does it does that make sense yeah, but that's where I talked earlier about if you that culture continues to come down through the leadership to everyone, it, it is sustainable. I mean, I've got 108 employees, and I can say it is sustainable. Now, if I had 30 stores, it's going to be chal- yeah. more challenging, obviously. But sure. with 108 people, it's there, and I can tell you that it's there. But we've made it a priority in our company, and that's I, I, and that's I, the I, difference. I, I 100% understand what you're saying, and, and I believe it to my core. The What I'm questioning, and it's because I'm not there. You're there. You know. I don't. I don't know. What, I, what I'm wondering is that it's, I can't do this, and I have five employees. At 108, it's going to get diluted. <laughs> it, it's just, it is. And it's because it's, the mindset that most people carry is it, it's normal to think I want to make more money. My challenge to my staff was, what are you going to do with it? I don't know. And I, I had this conversation with my techs. I go, listen, the more money just turns into nicer hotels. That's it. It's no longer Fairfield Inn. Now you're staying at the Marriott. What's wrong with the Fairfield Inn? Nothing is wrong with the Fairfield Inn. It's a bed. It's a bed with a shower and a toilet. But so is the, the JW Marriott is as well. The only difference is the maids will come in and they will fold your clothes if you throw them on the floor. They will come in and they will fold your clothes. I don't say in hotels like that. They don't fold my clothes. <laughs> They, <laughs> that's the only difference. Am I wrong? And at the end of the day, though, I think the question becomes is your mindset, like you feel like it's enough and you're trying to push that mindset onto your team. And you're, that's what I'm, and I don't I'm know you that right. Way, but <laughs> No, you're right. Exactly. They don't get it. Should they get it though? That's what I was just going to say. Should they get it? Because yes. I'm not you and they're not you. Exactly. So you're trying okay, to well, hold on now, hold though. on now. You, you're speaking out of both sides of your mouth because you say my culture is then I, I set the tone 108 people later. I've got 108 people that are understanding of what it is. I'm trying, I'm telling you that's my culture and I'm, and I'm, what I'm having difficulty in is because it's so counterintuitive. It's counterintuitive. The face that my tech made, he's like, what do, what do you mean? They're just nicer hotels, dear. You still go on vacation once or twice a year. You still go wherever the hell it is you want to go. It's just you stay in nicer hotels. But that's your view of it. Like, So, I mean, yes, you can have the culture go all the way through and still at – if this person wants to make more money, you coach them, you develop them, and you get them. No, to they work. wouldn't come work for me. 
He's saying, I'm freaking him out. His eyes just went, what are you talking about? <laughs> he doesn't get it. I'm telling you, it's it's are, flipping weird. I'm just telling look, 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 look. Are you not used to that by now? What's that? Like when people's eyes do this funny <laughs> look. I mean, like, I see so many. I people. need answers. I'm looking for something that can give me some answers. But, look, but I mean, if you're unwilling to accept the answer. No, the, the answer is the crazy eyes. That's what I get. They're like, <laughs> what are you talking about? This is just insane. If somebody wants to make more money, if they come to me and like, I'd like to make more money. My first reaction is you're staying after, at the wrong hotel. What's that? That you tell them they're staying at the wrong hotel. That's I'm done telling them what for. Like I, I can understand, but that's here, your opinion though. It's not, it's not the, my, just my opinion. It is, it is my, it is the, the philosophy that drives my life. Okay. It's not just an opinion. It's, it's like, dude, you don't need more money because the more money just translates into more shit. Like, what do you need more shit for? Who needs more shit? Like, what is it? What's wrong with your shoes? The shoes that you have now, what's wrong with them? Oh, I want a second pair and I want them to be Jordans. Why? What it, question it. That's all I'm saying. There's nothing wrong with the Jordans. If you're wearing Jordan, you, no. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with the Jordans. There's nothing wrong with the Jordans. So I'm just curious. And I, don't take this the wrong way. What does your job post look like? Is it like, do you never want to make more money? Yes. You, like, is that what it reads? Because that's my mind. You sat in my class, dude. I saw you, you sat in my class. I have some weird ass ads, but the, you don't have to get responses. I, I'm saying like, if I had somebody that came in and said, look, I don't care about the money. I don't want to work weekends. I want it to be flipping air conditioned and I love working on cars and I don't want to talk to customers and that guy would get hired on the spot on the spot. I'd ask him, do you have tools in the toolbox? And he'd say, yeah, or she, and it, and by the way, oh, that was a whole thing too. Oh, it was a whole thing. But Did money you, is one component of that. Cause all the things you just rattled off yeah. my 10 stores offer that plus growth opportunities, mentorship, coaching. Yeah. Development. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Sure. I have all that too. Yeah. Yeah. So we all have the same growth stuff, opportunities, but, like, but again, like I would question like, what, what is that you want to grow into? Do you, are you, do you not like working on cars? Yeah. I don't like working on cars, but the only thing I will say is that once they age out, you've got somewhere to put them where I don't. Yeah. So like, they growth opportunity is financial they, though, too. Yeah. Growth opportunity is, am I going to be able to retire because of the cost of so, living and social so security? That's, that's the different conversation that I have with them. I'll give you a raise. It's going into your retirement. You don't see a dime. Okay. And that's the reaction I get. And I go, what do, what do you mean? It's because like, what do you, do you need, do you need a new car? I'll get you a new car because you need it. The cars that you have is broken down. We'll get you a new car. Do you need shoes? Do you, do you buy? You probably don't, but I buy my technician shoes. I do. I buy them shoes. Hey, those shoes are a little worn out. You need a new pair. Guess what? It's expense line. You know why I don't make money? I buy my technician shoes. You know what I don't spend it on? Flipping payroll. Could care less. And I'm just saying, like, if you need something, that's a different conversation. And it's not that, uh, hey, I need you to run all your expenses through me. It, it, that, is, that is not it. And I, I, I toe a line there because I, I understand that may sound come off that way until my technician probably <laughs> does. But it's not, I don't want it to be that way. I want them to go, hey, I really like to, my goal is to buy a house. Okay. That a hundred percent. Okay. Let's make that happen. Obviously I cannot pay your mortgage for you. Although I sort of do, right? That has to be the specific number of income that you have to hit in order for your mortgage to be viable. What's that number got to be? Let's figure this out. Go find, look some houses, what area do you want to live in? What's that number got to be? Let's get you to that number. That's a conversation. I will put more money into their paycheck, but the rest of this BS, it's BS. Like I will, I'll pay you more, but it needs to go into your retirement. I, I'm beginning to get concerned. I mean, <laughs> I've long known that you were beginning. No, no, I've long known that you were delusional. Okay, I've always I'm known off. That. Yeah, that, that's just. I'm that, not crazy, mother effer. No, it's I, not you. No, I'm just saying, <laughs> look, I'm just saying that I am starting to be more and more concerned that this is all just an effort to subvert paying taxes. That, that, that your whole focus has become for so long, like, I don't want to pay taxes on anything. 
that you're literally building your entire I have a metaphysical opposition to paying taxes. I find the entire thing just absurd. But, but regardless, past that, past that. But you still, you do end up still like you buy something, you pay taxes on it. Like you still end up paying taxes regardless. I pay property tax, all on and on and on it goes. I'm just saying, I just I I want the technicians to view employment and work differently than just it gives me more money so I can buy nicer shit to impress people I don't know on. Facebook. What do you think when he says that? Uh, <laughs> There's a lot to unpack there. Yeah, right? it's. Hey, hey, Andrew, oh, my phone is gone. Which means I picked up the music you're about to hear. I'm playing. So who, who did who picked your music? Uh, it was Apple Music just decided to start playing. So, <laughs> bro, if that's the worst thing that happens on this show, <laughs> you win all of the good episodes. It's fine. <laughs> I, I guess I still like I'm trying to unpack this a little bit because it's, <laughs> it's like the look I gave you is uh, that's the best way I could say it. Like it's <laughs> you gave me crazy I, eyes. I did. I did. I, I, I felt, glazed I've, over and he's like I felt him coming on my head almost. I'm like, what is going on over here? <laughs> we got him on video. It's gonna be awesome. <laughs> Just don't make any memes about it. Bro. Yeah. <laughs> bro, you don't come on this show not <laughs> expecting to leave a meme. Okay. <laughs> Am I gonna get a sticker or something? Too? Yeah, so we got stickers. We have stickers. <laughs> no, sticker stickers. memes. I guess. Yeah, yeah we'll I'm gonna have it. Yeah. I have it on video. <laughs> it's like what are you talking about? <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> I, crazy. I, I just I love introducing people to you that have never met you before because it Is happens. Right? Yeah, it happens so frequently. The crazy eyes and you don't pick up on 90 <laughs> percent of them. He was just so appalled that he just couldn't control it. Like I don't, most people, I don't know. You just I kind of want to reach over and like but I, I held myself back. No. Yeah. <laughs> I think the was big thing. Was he going to physically attack me? Were I thought about it. Like that? I thought really? about it. Yeah. Yeah. How, Jeez. how many? It is, it is rare that we get through an episode without somebody threatening <laughs> physical violence against me. It happens all the time. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Pop. <sighs> uh, well, I mean, seriously, unpack it. What do you think? I guess the first thing I think of is okay. If I'm a technician working for you and I want to make more money because I love music or I want to go tour the country, or I want to go to every concert there is, you're going to tell me that's a waste of my money? Is that, no, no, that's no, no. kind of the vibe I get out of that. Like, it's like, why, why do you need two pairs of shoes? Why do you need an extra pair of this? Yeah, why, yeah. Like, I get that. I feel but like I it's would micromanaging say, your people to like deter growth. Like, no, 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 no. If I, I want I, a bigger I house because I want a bigger house, that's my right as a damn American. Yeah, 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 I get that. I get that. Absolutely, 100%. I get that. But you're telling me it's not my right in some capacity well, and, and because it's I, not I, your philosophy. And that's fine. There's nothing wrong with your philosophy. I mean, no, there you is. Just, but, yeah, you're saying that there is. Yeah, yeah. But I think I think the 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 never-ending drive towards more just for the sake of more I I think is is spiritually bankrupt. And I think I will agree with that. Yeah. But like, that's, that's I don't wake up everybody. every day. I don't wake up every day is like, oh, I need more. I need more. That's not my wiring. And I, I don't think there's a lot of shop owners that are wired that way. A lot, yeah. a lot of business. I've owners. never met one who wasn't. Really? Yes. No, there's a lot. There's a lot that aren't. Like, that it's just then. They, how do you set your goals then if it's not more? Well, goals are different from me wanting more though. Like at the end of the day, more can be my team grew. My team made more money. We had a bigger impact on our community. It's still so, more though. Yeah, but it's positive more. It's not, oh, I, I want we're more. Putting, we're more. putting value on it where you're saying that's a positive. So, I'm looking so at it So if you're like, telling me that if you made a quarter million dollars more and you granted some make-a-wish kids wish, you, you wouldn't feel good about that because I mean, you made yeah, more Yeah, but money? at the end of the well, day, <laughs> I'm doing it to make me feel good about but having you need, you made need, an extra quarter million do, dollars. You need more to do that, though. Mm. I mean, if you you're, if you're not paying more taxes, to do that. you do need more. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, you do need more. And you're right. Like you're absolute. That's good. That's a good objection. The the hey, hey I want to go travel the country. I want to. I want to. Uh, I want to go hit some concerts up. My, f- I have no problem with that. If that's what you want to do, then great. I want to have that conversation with you, though. 
I want to have the conversation of the conversation can't be come to me going, Hey, I want to make more money because my rebuttal is always going to be why. And if it's, I love, I love playing music and I want to go travel with my band or, uh, I, I want to go to, uh, hit all these concerts. I want to go, so go, okay, but then let's, let's come up with a way to make but, that happen. But why do you need to be in control of it? Though? It's, it's not because I don't want it to be, uh, it, <coughs> at the end of the day, is it, is it, does money need to be involved? Yeah. I don't want the conversation to be centered around. Well, I want to make more money because you, that this, the singular drive to hit that number at the bot at the end of the year on your tax return, your AGI has to be higher, higher, higher. That is nothing wrong with having that goal. Nothing wrong with it. I just, that person couldn't work for me because it is so diametrically opposed to how I handle life and money and business and all that stuff. It's just so you, there are a thousand shops you can go work for, dude, and you're going to be wildly successful at those shops. You're going to go kill it. So what you need to do is fire everybody and clone yourself. And then you should. No, 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 no. It's a, I mean, it's you're, a, you're talking about a pretty small percentage. Yeah. Percentage. It's but it's no, 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 small I'm saying, I'm saying though that, that you're, you were able to find 108 people that shared your culture or you could at least infuse that culture into mm-hmm. them. I'm saying I just need to find five or six. <laughs> <laughs> but your pool is smaller because of the way you look at this. I and know. And, and it's, it's depressing. Your, it's your thought process. It's your way of doing it. And that's fi- fine because it's your way. Yeah. It's like his way is going to be different my way. Yeah. But you have to find the people that fit that culture, fit that model. Man, it just seems like it's going to be really tough. It's going to be it's tough. It's not I mean, scalable. You're, you're, that's what, I, that's what I was telling you. It's you're not fishing scalable. In, uh, lake that's dried up know. <laughs> like, it's terrible then why why do it though i i just i cannot do it any other way why i don't know I don't, i'm he's stubborn it's it, it, stubbornness is absolutely part of it but it he's got i, I have to control of everything yeah, it's gonna, no no it's not stubborn. it's not control it's not control it has nothing it to do with it feels like control though. it's Bro, not I, isn't the, li- li- the, li- 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 the linda 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 <laughs> linda listen listen, <laughs> listen. i I work with you on almost a daily basis. I do. Right. I am controlling of things I care about. Yes, but that's my that, point. That's an is, understatement. But that it, is, is but you, care, I want them, you care about this, and that's why you're controlling it. I do care. I, I mean, do. Look how fired up you get talking about it. you. Can you care yeah. about it? There's no question. <laughs> it's control. <laughs> you haven't seen fired up, dear. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's not. It's not that. It's not. I, I care about my employees. I care about the mindset. But at the end of the day, like what I'm trying to do, I have to go out and find customers. I have to provide a, in my, for me to feel good about the transaction, I have to feel that I'm over delivering on value. Does that make sense? Absolutely. I have to feel like yep. I'm over delivering on value. I'm giving you more than what you're paying for. Otherwise, it doesn't work. I feel icky. Okay. But I still have to charge enough to make things sustainable. Okay. So the value that I'd provide has to be more, but the number has to be that you're bringing back to me has to be a sustainable dollar amount. All of that has eight thousand variables floating around little things that i have to do i got to get the marketing right i got to make sure that the phone calls are being answered properly and all we have to make sure that we're talking to them all those little things there's like a thousand little steps that then result in money coming into the shop there's so much work for me it has been since i opened so much work put into just getting one person to come in through the door and pay me money so much work, blood, sweat, and tears that now that money is sitting there and it can't, in, in my mind, like, do you know how hard it work? All of us work to get that dollar in there. You just want more of it to do what? Oh, you want to go buy a nicer car. You have a nice Toyota. You want a Lexus. Now, if that's what you really want, okay, okay. I, I would Are you still sure you're okay with that though? Well, then, yeah, see, there, there you go. And I, I would be a little bit miffed if they had a really nice care me and they wanted to go buy an ES. Like, why do you need the ES? Like, what, what are you doing with that? And I'd want, 
at the end of the day, if that was like, like they told me the stories, like, well, what my dad died when he really would like, he, he had this Lexus and he, and he, they told me some smush story and I, I, I'll turn into a ball of mush and be like, okay, let's go get you the Lexus. Let's make it happen for you. The goal for me, I need them to, to articulate and I need them to, to question their own motives and their own goals. Because I think there has to be a higher purpose to it than just, I want more money. It has to be a higher purpose than that. Almost like it comes back to the conversation where we always talk about the $100,000 technician. A uh, hundred thousand is an arbitrary number. It doesn't mean anything. But everybody wants a hundred thousand. Every shop owner wants yeah. to break a million. Every show right? shop owner wants to break a million. Every single, yeah, every technician wants to make a hundred thousand. The question is why? And I, if the, if there's higher purpose to it, then the goal is irrelevant ultimately. But the higher purpose behind it, the the story behind it, the that is more important to me and therefore worthy of the dollars that we work so hard to get in the door. Is, is, I don't mean to interrupt, but okay, is this okay. does this come down to solely that that you work so hard for that money you have an unhealthy relationship with that money it's not just me i don't do i don't do squat i know but it's the (laughs) fact that because you know we had this conversation the other day and he got like super like like he said this is not upset okay (laughs) as we had the conversation the other day and he got super mad at me because like my family business um is right next to my first shop and all we did was we put a sign up and said we fix cars and so cars started rolling in and I was terrible at it. I mean, like absolutely terrible at fixing cars. I'm not any better today, but my team's pretty good at it. Um, and so then we built a bigger shop and the clients came in. And so for him, that's frustrating because he's worked his ass off just to get the clients he has now. Is is that playing into how you feel about this? Is because you have. I, worked I so see hard. all the, the effort you put behind your marketing and all that stuff. Well, there. I know, but I'm saying you. It, it's it's hard, I mean, do it. it, I I came up. I'm the oldest of six kids. I grew up on top of 400 people on a farm. Like yeah. I had nothing. There was nights we ran out of food. Like so, I you talked about that fighter, the drive, whatever that the dog that, in you. Yeah. That, that came from probably that. Mm-hmm. It had to have. But my my question for you is you talked about your surpassing the value of your clients. Yeah. Have you thought about what that looks like to your employees? Like what their expectation of surpassing what you pay them is? Like what what drives them? Yeah. I, I do think about that, but that's I, I need it's them. not always going to be money with all these people. But like, I don't want it to be. Are money you, ever. are you exceeding their expectations? Because that's how you build a I, team that I shows hope up. So. But and do if you I'm know not, that? What's that? Do you know that? Do you talk to them? Do you I, I do. I do. But that doesn't always stay. Mm-hmm. I had one that it changed. Mm-hmm. His, his, what he valued and what he saw as important shifted. And what I was delivering was no longer enough value to him. Well, life and happens. That, yeah. <laughs> well, at that point, like, we're now having to split ways here mm-hmm. because it's not, this isn't, I, I, this is what I do. This is what I provide. If that's not good value for you, I understand. But you, at that point we got to split ways, but that's why you want to make sure like, like you were saying, 108 people have to share that, 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 that culture or, or it doesn't work otherwise. So it's at 108 about- or a thousand and eight or even, at like ten thousand, it's still sustainable, but you do get to a point where it just it gets watered down. Trust me. Well, you just have to continue to build a culture. I always tell people like I can ask my people to bury the body. I can ask them to lock arm and run through a wall, and they're all going to do it. Yeah, and it's because it's continuously trickled down. Our values are that important to us, but we also spend the time to make sure that they, as their goals change, as their life changes, as things happen, we make adjustments. Because we have the ability to do that. Because not every person, I, I feel, don't take this the wrong way. I feel like you're trying to make a cookie cutter. Like this is how every one of my technicians, you're all the same, and they're not. Yeah, I yeah. can see that. I don't know. I don't, please don't take that the wrong way. But that's, no, no, no. That's how I it feels that. to me. Is like, yeah, every one of these guys is the same. The same cutout. Yeah, 
Yeah. And they're not like their life could change tomorrow and they're going to be like, Hey, I need this or Hey, I need that. And you're like, well, no, why? Blah, blah, blah. And like, that's not really sustainable. Well, it's not, it's not a no, but it's but, a but, why, but there's always a why. But is it sustainable to confront? Cause to me, that comes across a little confrontational. Yeah. Because I don't, maybe I don't feel comfortable sharing the why with you. Yeah. That, yeah. That but if a, you don't, if you're not willing to open up and share, then you're not, you're not going to work for me. I, I just, I can't, I can't have somebody, I don't need them to spill their guts. I don't need them to spill their guts, but I, I do want them to at least, at least share in, in the, in the goals and motivation and, and desires and the needs and the wants, because at the end of the day, like, I don't want it to just be, here's your paycheck, go spend it wisely. And then that's it. And then, you know, like you have technicians that sometimes struggle with, with their pay and they're making, <coughs> they're making bank and they can't pay their bills. Yeah. Like, what the hell is happening here? What's wrong? I, I, I was I, I'm not judging the guy. I have a problem with the guy having a fund for his employees that they can tap into to to borrow money on. It doesn't uh, promote financial security or yeah. that you care. I, I, I disagree. Financial, yeah, yeah financial. I disagree with that. Too. Like, I forced all of my staff to get a retirement plan. I forced all of them. Yeah. I said, we this is how it's going to be. Ours. They're all auto enrolled. Yeah, same. And then, and then it's it. I gave them the option to do a tax, uh, a a uh, post tax retirement setup, so that they would have both untaxed or already been taxed money that they can pull out of retirement tax, and then money that they have to pay taxes on. I wanted them to have both. I want them to all be millionaires. What, what once you retire, you leave the shop, you can go do whatever the hell you want to do. Okay, go spend your money on stupid stuff, whatever you want to go piss it away. Great. All I'm saying is that. You come in to my shop, and if your desire is, I, I want to go, I want to buy a, a pair of Jordans. But even then, like I have no problem with a pair of Jordans. Are you They're sure? Just, <laughs> it it kind of so seems frivolous. like you, it's so it seems like you have like, a problem with a pair of Jordans. I, that, that's because what I'm it's so like, but it's, it's not important to you. It's, it's fickle. Not, it's not important to I, you. It's not important to anybody. I'm sorry. It's not. It's bull. Then baloney. Then All you're doing is feeding billions of dollars into a billionaire for no flipping reason <laughs> than to just show it off for people you don't even know. You don't even know these people. What do you care that they see that you have Jordans on? You look stupid. <laughs> do you think it's because you got bullied when you were a kid that you're like this? Was it because you didn't have Jordan? Did, did, did you not get Jordans? Oh, I didn't get Jordans. You know what it was when I was a kid? It was the pumps. Reebok pumps. Yeah. With a little thing on the back. Did you not get those? I did not get those, no. Well, I got them eventually, but they were they had been at, at the outlet. <laughs> <laughs> so is that, I got them I got them with the outlet. Is that where this comes no, from? No, you would think that I would want the the Jordans now and that I'd be walking around with Jordans and be like, look at my sweet Jordans. I'd be showing it off to my technicians. They're like, one day you can have one of these. In the meantime, you can look at one look at mine. That's a terrible <laughs> idea to do. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I don't just, ever do that. If the perception, <laughs> if the perception from technicians is the meme, you've seen the meme, they pull up in the Lambo and they're like, Hey, if you work real hard and you give it your all, I'm going to buy me a second one next year. <laughs> you've seen that meme? <laughs> yeah. That's the perception of ownership from technicians. That's how they see us. That's how they see us. It's just another Lambo. It's just another like vacation house. It's just another, you know, dot, dot, dot. But the ones that you engage and you make part of your culture and you really involve them, they also understand the risk that we yeah. took as owners. Yeah. Like I would say out of 108 employees, 100 of them understand the risk that I took is opening this company. Sure. But I'm not afraid to communicate that with them. I'm not afraid to communicate full transparency. Yeah. They know what it takes to turn the lights on every day. They know what it takes to open the garage doors up and hit, hit turn the AC on and pay for the scans. Like they know all of it. Yeah. And once they understand that, their mindset shifts. I don't ever get asked hardly for raises ever. 
And it's not because we don't give them. It's not because, you know, we have whatever. It's because we show them the path. We show them and we do the regular one-to-ones and we figure out what's important to them and we align our goals with theirs because that's how everyone wins. And I want to win. It's not just about money. It's about, did I put a better person out in the world that worked for me for two years or six yeah. years or 15 years? Yeah. That's, for me, what's important. And that, that's what we should be looking at is, are we putting better people out into the workforce and for into sure. the world? Are we yeah. creating better fathers, husbands, you know, coworkers? Like, that's what's important. Giving them the tools to yes. become better people. And if the money's part of that, so freaking be it. And I that like means- that, though. I think he changed. I think this whole conversation changed because that sounded really good. I like that. That's very much me. Maybe I just did a terrible job in the last hour of articulating that. One day... If it just happens to be the money, that's great. One day we're going to have a psychologist on this show, and I'm you quite concerned. That's you don't want to unpack this. I'm quite concerned that they're probably going to overload and stroke out. Probably, yeah. so right. pr- probably get the subscription uh, prescription done for them too. <laughs> <laughs>